Okay, welcome back. So last time we finished up by using our terminal and customizing it so it had like a nice little scheme. Um, I chose black and green, but you may have chosen something different. I also have this little opacity which makes it look really cool. Um, next, we want to talk about something called the bash profile. And uh, you may be wondering what the heck that is. Uh, but essentially, a bash profile is essentially a file that allows me to manipulate this whole thing here. Um, it's a, uh, without getting too complicated actually, this thing here, we call it the command line or the terminal, but this is actually also called a bash terminal. And bash just basically means born again shell. And this, you can think of this terminal here as a shell. Um, Mac is actually based on the Linux software. Uh, so Mac OS, one of the nice things about it that makes it so popular is that in addition to Steve Jobs' like beautiful graphical U user interface UI, I'm just going to say, um, you also get the benefit of having the powerful Linux operating system underneath the hood, as per se. So right now, like, you know, I can manipulate files and folders or navigate through them using, you know, these beautiful files and folders. Um, uh, if you want to think of this as basically like graphics user interface, um, I can do it through here. However, I can also manipulate files and folders using this terminal. And if you think about it, the terminal is basically like what started it all. I don't know how old you might be. Um, but for those who are kind of old timers, you may remember that most computers looked like just a black screen with a blinking cursor. And um, at that time, we called those things shells or terminals, and we typed commands there. And then over time, some smart guys learned how to create, you know, this thing, more common thing that we see today in modern computing, which is the window, right? And also we have the desktop background. And then we have a mouse, which allows us to move files and folders on our computer. And we can right click and we can create new folders. And all these little commands that we, you know, sort of take for granted um, were kind of programmed first from here. And then eventually built up to this, which eliminates basically the need for this. So most users don't need a terminal. But if you're a web developer, you should know about how the terminal works and how you can use it to your advantage. So with that said, we'll go ahead and talk about the bash profile. Remember, this is a shell and we call this a bash shell or a born again shell because essentially this is the shell revised. There have been many different iterations since that time, like it was a, you know, a blinking cursor on the screen and this is the current, um, new fancy shell. Um, I can get into more history about it, but I want to bore you with that right now. Uh, let's just focus on creating um, and manipulating this shell. So I'm going to use a command called touch. We saw that one before. That allowed us to create our index.html before on our desktop. However, if you've noticed, I'm actually right here in the squiggly line folder. So I'm one folder above the desktop. So next I'm going to create a file called bash profile and I'm going to spell it out here like this. And I want you to do the exact same thing. And remember this file after we create it, I'm going to hit enter. Um, when you hit enter you probably will see nothing return, but don't worry, it's there. We can go ahead and type in a command ls followed by dash la and this will show us all the hidden files in addition to files and folders. This dot here means that this file is hidden. Normally you can't see hidden files on your computer. So if I click the finder and I go over to my users folder like uh, last time, you'll see that I don't have any of these files here that are starting with dots. It only starts with the add lim applications book desktop. So those files are hidden from us. And the reason they're hidden from us is because they're probably important files that we don't want to destroy or manipulate. Um, so they're hidden from us for our own safety. However, if you know what you're doing, feel free to manipulate those files and folders. Um, and I will say that with caution. 
Uh, but the thing that you can manipulate is this bash profile. Remember, it's a hidden file that allows you to manipulate this window. So I'm going to go ahead and use our command nano, which allows us basically to edit any file or folder. And I'm going to add the name of the file, which is bash profile. Remember, we created this file. So now when I click enter, you'll notice that I have nothing by default. Um, so that's great. You probably should see the same screen. So the thing I want to do is I want to customize my you know, terminal so that next time I don't see a whole bunch of junk. So I'm going to go over here to shell first off and show you what I mean by that. If I click to new window and then new window with basic settings, you'll see that I get this thing that says last login, Monday, July 4th, and then I get this long, you know, basic um, uh, wording that just basically seems really confusing. Uh, it shows my MacBook Air, followed by a squiggly line, followed by my username. Uh, I don't want all that stuff. I just want it to all like disappear and go away, except for the file and folder I'm in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in um, PS1, and bear with me for now, followed by a quote, and we call this a string, followed by a slash W. And we'll go ahead and explain what all this means very shortly. Next up, I'm also going to add a bracket, angular bracket like this, followed by a space. And I'm going to go ahead and end this with a quote. So bash and terminal and command lines all about writing commands. And so far as we've seen, we've seen ls, we've seen cd, we've seen touch, we've seen a whole host of different commands. PS1 allows us to manipulate the um, actual prompt that gets shown here. If you notice, I have a blinking cursor. And, you know, like I said, I don't like how it looks right now. So by saying PS1 here, I'm manipulating this cursor here, or this prompt, and I'm saying inside of this two quotes, we call this a string in programming, um, I want to show my working directory followed by a angular bracket and a space. So let's go ahead and save this. Remember control X and then Y to save and then enter to save. And of course anytime we edit something we want to use the source command. Uh, we didn't have to do this for uh, the index.html but anytime you edit your bash profile you want to source your bash profile so that the changes get saved immediately. So I'm going to use the source command. Remember, it saves the changes immediately. Otherwise, we'd have to close this terminal and then reopen it to see our changes the next time. I'm going to press Enter. And if you notice, all of this stuff has gone away. If I close this, and I close this, and I come back up here and I open another shell, I no longer get all of that extraneous information. Of course, I still get the date I locked in, but I don't have all of that confusing information. Um, I, instead, I just get like the squiggly line. So maybe you might be wondering, is the squiggly line actually helpful? It still seems a little confusing. And I agree with you. However, the squiggly line basically just means your user's profile directory. Don't forget that. If you ever forget, the squiggly line is your friend. That is basically the same equivalent of your user directory in a Mac. Um, or Linux also, if you're using Linux. And if I CD up, I still see I have the users folder, which is basically the same as this. And then if I CD up two dots up again, that gives me also the root directory here. And of course, if I type CD followed by squiggly line again, I get back to my CD users directory. I mean, my actual user profile directory. And then of course, if I type LS here, I still see all of my files and folders, including desktop. And I can go over to desktop like before, and I can still do things like touch index.html. But this is very helpful because it shows you now what directory you're currently working in, as opposed to being too much information and it's very difficult to read. So remember that bash profile, and in order for me to get back to it, I have to always remember the bash profile always goes in the squiggly line directory. If you'd put it anywhere else, like on your desktop, it won't work has to be in your squiggly line directory. Um, if I go back into my bash profile here, I'm going to just use a nano command to edit it. There's my command 
And I can also do other cool things too, like I can create aliases here. And aliases are basically shortcuts. And without getting too detailed, I can do something very cool, like I can write alias open. And again, I'm going to use two quotes for a string. And so anytime I say open, I want to open, and I'm going to add this following stuff here, open a, and let's see here. I'll just say finder, and I have to use these quotes, so bear with me. And I'm just going to add a dot here. So I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to control X, actually, to save. I'm going to press yes and enter. Then remember to source bash profile. We have to do this in order for our changes to be saved. And it's not bash profiles with an S, it's bash profile. Remember you do that. Otherwise you're going to create another file um, or it may give you an error. And by, you know, let's just say I type in some garbage just for the heck of it. Uh, bash is pretty smart about telling you the command was not found. So if you make a mistake, it will probably tell you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just type in, um, I'm going to cd over to desktop, I'm going to type open. And you'll notice that now this thing opens a finder for me, and it shows me the little index.html. So that alias command that I just created in the bash profile, I'll get to it by doing bash profile once more, allows me to write shortcuts. Oh. Notice I made a mistake here. I tried to open the bash profile from my desktop. So control X to exit. And because I was there, you saw nothing. So I need to CD up and I need to CD over to my users folder directory. And then I need to ls-la to make sure that I'm in the correct directory and I can definitely see my bash profile. You'll notice I have a whole bunch of other files and folders. You can ignore those for now. But essentially, as we go through this um, terminal uh, tutorial, you will learn about all the other things eventually. Uh, but basically here, if I nano.bash profile, now that I'm in the correct folder, you can see here's my commands, and you can continue to add commands here as you like, as you become better at using the terminal. And you can make all kinds of shortcuts that will help you save time. Um, I have a shortcut where I will make not only an index.html file, but I'll make the entire folder with index.html, style.css, and script.js. So every time I just create one, all I have to do is just write one command in my terminal, and basically it will create the whole file and folder structure for me, which is really cool. I might do that in the next video just as a demo to show you the power of terminal, but for now that concludes this video.